It's the top of the hour here at WGAB. Up next, Hit Singles, hosted by Cleghorn Mandrake. On today's show, how to convert recipes for four or more people into recipes for one. But first, these commercials. Hi, this is Reverend Eustace Pone here to remind you that the Pone Ark Experience will be opening very soon. Come on down on opening day to see the great reveal of the greatest recreation of Noah's Ark ever recreated. I guarantee that you will see something that you have never seen before. It will literally be an event that will change history. Also, balloons for the kitties. Pone's Ark Experience. Just travel down rural Route 30 until you see the otherworldly electrical storm, and you're there! Well, it looks like Pone is going to open his dismal Bible-themed misery fair after all. Well, I can't wait. The level of fail will be delicious. I just wish we could go without giving Pone any of our money. Yeah, there must be a way we could sneak in. Well, I ain't going. Seriously? A Bible-themed park is opening. I thought it would be right up your alley. The only thing allowed up in my alley is my husband, Raul. I mean, I thought you'd dig it the most. When Pone had his megachurch, he was my main competitor in the church business here in town. I ain't gonna help that wrinkled Bible jockey rebuild his ministry. But we're going to roll our eyes and giggle at the awfulness. Actually, that's a real weird thing to do if you think about it. Why are we going to the Ark Experience? I mean, we already know it's going to be awful, sponsored by somebody that we despise. It's giving us an opportunity to be smug jerks. Wait, I can be a smug jerk? I am suddenly interested. Well, maybe I don't like being a smug jerk. Since when? since now. Pone kind of deserves it. He swindled his megachurch out of millions and abandoned Opinionville when it was in the middle of its high arbiter crisis. Not to mention that he's a homophobic jerk pile. Besides, it's not like our money is really helping him in any way. That ARCA experience has fail written all over it in permanent marker. Maybe I'm getting old or something, but I just don't get off on kicking somebody when they're down. But it's Reverend Pone. If anybody in this town has it coming, it's him. And we're not even doing it to his face. We're just going to go to his theme park and snark our way through it. You used to love that. I know I did. I don't know, guys. It just seems so pointless. What benefit is there in hate visiting a park? It's what hipsters do. You know, when they go to the Liberace Museum or go take a tour at a spam factory. And you're a hipster, so what's the problem? I think hipsters do that ironically, not because they actually hate stuff. What's the difference? Oh, that's easy. The difference is... Um... Uh Uh-huh. See? I don't want to waste my time going to Pone's misadventure land. Besides, what if instead of laughing at everything, we wind up getting angry? What's there to get angry about? How about the fact that somebody like Pone, who is, let's face it, a turd of a person, is still able to prance about our community instead of being in jail? But visiting the Ark Experience might take some of the sting off that when we see how low he has sunk! Guys, I'm just burnt out on all the mocking, negative, hate-watching smugness that's been going around lately. What's the point to it all? If you don't like somebody or something, why waste your time on them? I may hate Reverend Pone, but... I'm tired of hating him. Sheesh, then you better stay off the internet. Without snark and hate watching and negativity, what's left? Cat videos and porn. Look, Jason, I know how it can seem like going to something like the Ark Experience or watching a video by someone that you can't stand can seem like a waste of time, but it can be very cathartic and reinforce the reasons why you feel the way you feel. Well, then maybe I don't need that reinforcement anymore. Maybe I'm confident in my opinions and beliefs to the point where I don't need to do that stuff. Maybe I can, I don't know, bury all that anger and move on with my life. Well, isn't anger a good thing too? Nope. Mama Fundy always said that no good comes from getting angry. Anger is for God only. No offense to Mama Fundy, but she's full of shit. Anger can be used to affect change. 
Well, guess what? I don't care. I don't want to be Angry Face Jason anymore. Then what do you want, you big baby? I want to laugh at something on YouTube that isn't at somebody else's expense. I want to go to things that I love because I love them. I want to be nice to people. Even to people that I disagree with. Even me? Even you. Unless you haven't noticed, Fundy, me and you are not just friends. We're close friends. You take that back! It's true, we see each other every day, we do practically everything together, and we've all been present at most of the major events in each other's lives. No, see, that's not possible. I cannot be friends with you three weirdos. I am a far-right conservative Christian, and you guys are... morons! Deny it all you want, you know it's true. You are changing the subject. The subject being your problem with being snarky and stuff. Okay, fine. I'm done with snark. I am no longer going to get all bent out of shape because somebody said or did something online or offline. And if I do go to Pone's amusement park, I'm going to go with an open mind and a smile in my heart. All right. There is no way that you could do that. You are a machine that is made of snark that runs on anger. Not anymore. This is the dawn of a new Jason. A happier, more positive Jason. Happy and positive. You. Wait, isn't happy and positive Jason one of the signs of the apocalypse? Hey, don't worry guys, this won't last. Three and a half seconds of reading YouTube comments and he'll be back to his old self in no time. I'm totally serious, you guys. I'm no longer gonna let things get to me. Let's test that. Go for it. The Star Wars saga is mediocre. At best. Well, I don't share your opinion, but I can see why you'd feel that way. Okay, stop this. You're kind of scaring me. The underlying message in Star Trek is that the communist ideal is correct. Huh. I never thought of it that way. Guys, this isn't right, and I kind of want to pee my pants right now. Science fiction sucks. Oh, well, you... I'm not done. Okay. Sucks donkey cocks, you beta male mangina. Hmm. You went too far, Gary. You went too far. Well, it's not for everyone. Okay, well, we've had our fun, but I would like this to stop now. I don't know how to deal with a Jason whose goat cannot be got. As a half-goat monster, I find that a little offensive. What do you guys think? Is snark and negativity running rampant, not just on the internet, but into society in general? And is there value in snark? Does it help or hurt? Please share your opinion, because it's important, and I, for one, would love to hear it. Funny, it's your turn. Um, is this the last episode of this show before it turns into a big hand-holding jamboree where we all respect each other's feelings and sing and crap? Comment down in the insightful expressions of insight section. Jason's right. Why waste so much time being cynical and angry? Yeah, you know what else? Conspiracy theories are stupid. I just use them to make myself seem interesting. They aren't much more than a manifestation of my own insecurities. What? And I realize that I depend on sex with multiple partners in order to protect myself from the possibility of being emotionally hurt in an exclusive relationship. Gah! Hey, I know, let's all go to the movie theater and re-watch Batman v Superman together. Those filmmakers worked hard and deserve a second chance. I think with our newfound positivity, we'll like the film more. I have a feeling that we'll give it 500 stars. Gentlemen, my crap is freaked out. I'm gonna go screaming down the street. I'll be back with some mental health professionals. You know, it's touching that you care so much about us, Fundy. Do you want a hug? Don't get near me. I might catch what you guys have, and I'd rather eat garbage from a Long John Silver's dumpster on a hot day than turn into one of you touchy feelies. How far will he get before he remembers that it's April Fool's Day? I say about two blocks. I have ten bucks in my pocket that says he makes it to three. I'll take that action. So, did you buy the tickets for Pone's Ark Experience? Yeah, last night. It sure was funny when you were all positive, non-snarky and stuff, Jason. Yeah. Funny.
Hey everybody, it's me, Oswald. And you guys want to be a member of a super secret club? Then you want to be part of the Lemmy Lizard Super Secret Club. And if you're part of that super secret club, then you can listen to this podcast. Late Seating with Jason and Atticus, which is a funny show about two guys telling a whole bunch of poop dirty jokes. Kind of, I guess, and also they cuss all the time. Like, all their words are cuss words and dirty potty words. No, it's not. Oh, come on. If I tell the kids that there's nothing but poop words and dirty cuss words, they'll go and listen to it because they like that kind of stuff. Just do the other podcast, please. All right. And the other super secret podcast that you can listen to if you're part of this club is... Late Seating with Jason and Steve. And that's a movie review podcast. And this time, they're going to be reviewing Howard the Duck. That's a real movie? Yes. Howard the Duck. Yes. A movie about a duck. A movie about a duck that, you know, is from another planet and wears clothes and falls in love with a girl. Don't lie to me. That's a real movie. No, that's like a fantasy movie that I made up in my head that I wish was real that cannot be a real movie. It is, I promise you. What happens in it? He, he fights a giant monster demon from outer space. Now I know you're lying to me.